Good evening. My name is Rudy, and tonight we're going to do Share Track and Basic One. So we're only going to go over the basics of the software. Where in Basic Two, we're going to go over um, the charting and the filtering and stuff like that. Okay. So first of all, uh, for you to log into the software, you need to go to encompass.sharetracking.com, and then enter your credentials. Username is always your email address, and then the password that you've created with the software, and then you say log in. Once you've logged into the software, you'll find your investments dashboard. Now, on your investment dashboard, you will start off with a default account, which we call the simulation account. So, and so you'll see that I've got two simulation accounts here: one that I'm playing around on, and then one which is my real simulation. And then I've got my trading account, which is my um, what I'm tracking on my real shares. Um, so, but when you start off, you'll only have one. Um, one circle here in the pie graph all right you won't have three different ones so if you want to create extra accounts you need to go to accounts manage accounts and then create your extra accounts from there okay so this will show you all your account balances for all your shares then you get your profit and your loss for the current um, portfolio you're on so for instance if i click on my trading account it's going to give me my profit and loss for my trading account so that's my income i've made so far my expenditure and then my profit that I've made. And then on my right hand side is my market values. So the market values uh, usually would be on a simulation one if you start off would be clear. So if I go click on simulation, you'll see that the market values are clear. But if I click on my trading account, then you'll see that it will give you different shares. All right. So it's more or less the same as your profits, your losses, but only with the shares that you've bought. All right. So we'll go show you things like Sabania Stallwater, TCP Transaction Capital, Kumba Iron Ore. AGL, New Gold, Pan Africa, and so on, depending on which shares that uh, you bought on the software. Underneath that, you get your accounts, the, the account name, the market balance, your cash balance, your investment value, so how much money basically invested of your cash, um, and your market market balance is basically in total all your shares all together um, with your your cash balance, basically what it, what it's worth. And then your investment value, what you've invested, total brokerages that you've paid, so the amount of brokerage fees that you've paid towards your, your broker that you're trading through, like for instance, FMB or Standard Bank or APSA or NetBank. But we uh, our software is based on Standard Bank's um, brokerage fees, so it will calculate at 110 Rand per transaction. And then your growth and your loss will show you um, if you've made any profits or losses, if you you start if you're starting to make profit, you'll see that it will go green, but if you if you're in a loss, it will be red. Okay, and then underneath that, it will give you your investment summary for your trading account. So it will give you the code of your share, the quantity that you've bought, unit costs. So unit costs uh, you must always remember is basically brokerage fees included. All right, so unit costs and total costs is always brokerage fees and brokerage percentage included. All right, where your current price is the current price per share and the current value is the current value of your shares in total. And then today's movement, overall movement, the percentage overall movement, and then the action. All right, so today's movement will obviously be the, the movement for today in cents. So just ignore the decimal value. So that's three rand seventy-eight. That's that that is thirty-nine cents. That's seven rand forty. So that's the movement basically for your shares for today, um, in cent value. Then the overall movement is in rand value, right? So that's twenty thousand one hundred rand uh, worth of profit so far. Um, that one is nine thousand eight hundred eighty-eight rand. Uh, of profit so far um, on Kumba, I've made 77,000 rand of profit. So that will only show you the profit that you've made so far with the percentage um, profit that you've made. Again, the action is basically where you're going to go and set up your um, your stop losses. You can view your graph from here. This is the small graph it gives you. You can buy extra shares from here. You can sell your shares. You can set your stop losses, and then if you close the window, window it will go away. Then, so that's it for the investment dashboard. So then, on, on the le left hand side, you, you'll also see that you've got the trader dashboard. But a trader dashboard is for those that trade CVs. So if you're doing CVs, contract for difference, um, then you can you can do it on the trader dashboard. The investment dashboard is only for equities 
It's nothing to do with CFDs. All right, this would be a long-term investment <coughs> where your trader dashboard is for your short-term trades, right? So let's say a day to a week to two weeks maximum um, on your trades. Then your analysis, underneath your analysis, you'll find your world market indicators. So your world market indicators will first give you a world market view map, all right, of all the um, of all the um, the indexes that we basically keep an eye on, um, and then your resources. So resources, you you can't trade on the software, but we at least give you the information um, on what they're currently doing. So what Brent crude is currently trading at gold, uh, golden rand, uh, gold um, in, in kilogram, um, your palladium, your platinum, your silver. Then underneath that you get your currencies. So showing you what the um, the currency, what the currencies are currently doing. We usually look at the bottom one, the South African Rand versus the US dollar, because the US dollar has got a lot to do with what the South African markets do. So that we can we can see currently we're trading at 14 Rand 13 per share. Okay, so so the, the Rand is um, quite strong at this stage for the percentage movement for the day. Um, and then obviously if it's made a growth or a loss. If it's made a growth, it means that, that the RAND actually um, weakened. If it's a loss, then the dollar um, weakened. All right. So you want you actually want the, the RAND to, to be to be strong um, towards certain shares, but but if you're looking at the mining industry, then you, you then you want a weaker RAND, things like for gold. You would want a weaker rand, something around about by 17 to 18 rand um, towards a dollar for the gold um, pricing to go to go up. Okay, and then your market indicator is just showing you what the world markets are currently doing. So right at the bottom, we will find J203, which is the um, South African All Share Index. Okay, with the the change that it ma that it's made with percentage change and the level that it's trading at and the last the last update, which would be um, that's the 17th. That's to, that's today. Okay. Underneath that, you get your your stock uh, movement view. So stock movement view only gives you a, a more or less an idea of what the markets has done for today and also for the past month. <coughs> so right at the top, usually you'll find a market sentiment showing you the bullish or the bearish trend. The markets are currently closed, so there's no market sentiment. Okay. So the market sentiment will show you a green and a red bar, all right, pushing against each other. So if the green bar is bigger, bigger than the red bar, it means that the markets are more positive. If the red bar is, is bigger than the green bar, then the markets are more negative. In your top 40 blue chip shares, um, these would be your top 40 most um, most known shares in South Africa, right? Your household name brands, like for instance, Nasbash, Glencore, um, Anglo Gold, um, First Rand, Photocom, MTN, Kumba Iron Ore, Capitec, um, Mondi PLC, Sabanya Stillwater, Sassel. So all the known shares would be listed underneath the top 40 um, blue chip shares. Okay. Um, and also another thing that if if you don't know what the code of the name is for the code, all you do is you click on the share, any place in the share, and it will give you the name at the top. So process NV. If I click on VOD, that's going to be Vodacom Group Limited. Okay. So every one of these. Um, if you click on them, they, they will give you the um, name for the company. And then also with, with the price, what, what it's currently trading at, with the percentage movement, right, that it's made for the day so far. Then the top 10 volume. So top 10 volume is, is basically um, the volume movement for the month. Right? If we click on GRT, for instance, okay, and we go to details, underneath details, you'll see what it did for today. Okay, that's the volume that it did for today, and that would be the volume that it did for the month in total. Okay, so always remember that the top 10 volume is based on the month, the month performance. All right, so these would be the month best performers, volume based. So that's the amount, the amount of shares that's been that's been um, bought. All right, not the amount of transactions, but the amount of shares that's been bought during the month. Then top 10 base performers will give you the top 10 base performers for the day, so percentage movement base. Um, so if you look at TGA, TGA is going to be starting at 31.89 um, with a percentage movement of 13.4% for today. 
and then and then the same with your worst performers, your top ten worst performers. So we said that ITU is twenty nine cents per share with a seventy two percent drop for the day. Okay, and it also doesn't mean that these shares um, are based or worst are the best or the worst shares on the JSC. Okay, it's only for the day. Okay. Then you get your price earnings average. So you're basically based on your PE ratio or your PE average um, in cents for the for those um, for those sectors. So basic materials current current PE average, price earnings average is 840. If we look at financials, 872. And if we look at real estate, 599. So this will only give you the average pricing. Um, so pr price earnings average in cents that you'll be able to gain through those through those sectors. And then top 40 shares bought by clients uh, or top 10 shares bought by clients. So this is the top 10 shares that our clients prefer to buy. Right at the top would be BHP Group PLC and at the bottom would be Nasbash um, Limited. So this is basically based on the amount of people that buy uh, buy certain shares. Okay, so it's percentage based. So if, if let's say we've got a hundred clients and out of the hundred, um, 80, 80 of them buy BHP, then obviously BHP would go set at the top, and then the rest would be divided between all the rest. Okay. Strongest stocks percentage above, and also weaker stocks percentage below 200-day moving average. Now these are basically based on the on the charting. So if we could quickly open Chart IQ. <clears throat> and we go to the chart and you'll see that i've got this red line on the chart over here now this red line over here this is the 200 day moving average now that that's what these two are based on now that if you look at tg or T thg toko sun it's currently set um 64 above the 200 day moving average um where cfr is only setting 30 percent above the the moving average Right, so these are all the shares that's currently the strongest ones that's trading above this 200-day moving average line, and you always want your shares to be above this 200-day moving average line, right? Because this is a really important line. If this line continues in an upward trend, your share would most likely always just follow, all right? Go go in that same same direction in an upward trend. But if you look at the weaker stocks percentage below 200 day moving average, those are the shares that that's not doing so good. All right, those are the shares that's struggling to get above that 200 day moving average line. Now, usually what what I do is I look at the share right at the bottom on the strongest stock um, percentage above 200 day moving average. I look at the one right at the bottom because that one would have the the best potential to still go on. Where a share like Toho Sun might come down again, right? So it might be overextended. So I'd much rather go go to the bottom of the list and and choose the one down there. And the same with weaker stocks. I won't go for a share like Anglo, for instance, which is 20% below the 200-day moving average line. I would go for one that's a bit closer, like for instance BTI or um, or NY1 or uh, the Spa Group. Which is a bit closer to the 200-day moving average line because it, it's got a chance to break through and go over to the stronger stocks. Okay. And then your positive share sector movement and negative share sector movement. So underneath these, you'll find um, the base shares in those uh, in that particular um, sector or the worst share in that particular sector so if we look at basic materials ucp was the best share so best share for today in that sector and on these base materials um rng was the weakest stock in basic materials right and so and and same goes for consumer goods and consumer services and energy and financials so it only shows you the best shares in those sectors or the worst shares in those sectors Satrix and exchange traded funds, um, we give you some charting on some of them. For instance, like the STX40 would be your top 40 blue chip shares, but you'll have to use another code for it. Um, like, for instance, the J203 to be able to see what the overall movement is on the, on the top 40. Um, but you can use the same codes also on, on your chart to go and pull it up, and you can also buy um, such shares on, on the software. So it is allowed to buy, all right? But only underneath your investment dash dashboard, it's not CVDs, all right? So any other shares, 
would have um, counterpart um, CVs, um, but there's only a limited amount of shares that's got CVs. All right, so you can always refer to your your bank, either FNB or Standard Bank. Pull up a, to a total quote, a quote through Standard Bank, and it will give you all the shares that's allowed to be traded on CVs. Okay, but Satrix, as I said, you you will be able to trade it on the software and also pull up charting. So it's groupings of share. Like for instance, your uh, your SDX Fin would be your financials. Your SD your SDX um, 40 would be your top 40 um, shares. Then ETFs that change traded funds, same thing. You can trade them trade them on the software, but but we don't have charting on it. Where with Satrix we do have charting, but on exchange traded funds ETFs there is no charting. You will need to use another provider for charting on them. Um, but ETFs, basically how they work is they're ta tax-free investments. So you can you can gain profit on these sub shares without paying any tax. And also the percentage movement on them isn't that great. So you, you will find sometimes one that would, let's say, move 5% per, per day if you're lucky. Um, some, some of them up until 2% or 3% per day. Or they'll fall by one or two or three or five percent per day all right depending on which direction so it works more or less the same but these are also groupings all right so like for instance your canadian top 50 or chinese top 500 or your south african top 40 is also listed here one of the satrix ones it, the s640 would also be underneath the etf okay so that will also count as an e, uh, etf to trade but these you can only only trade um on your on the software and also you can trade them in a tax-free investment account right so you'll see that once you open an account through easy equities or fmb or Stadamank or any one of those they will give you an um a, a tax-free investment account to play with then your winning shares list now the winning shares list it will give you winning shares that our guru has set up for us so guru's watch list will give us aspen Pharma Care Holdings, Talcum SA, and Anglo American PLC, and they also consider BHP Group. Underneath latest performers, we'll get we'll get BHP Group PLC, Omni Gold, Process, New Gold, and Talcum SA. So these are the latest performers on her list, and also the recently added shares. Um, so the recently added ones would be MTN. Uh, Woolworths, Capitec, Bukila Property, SAPI, Discam, Talcom, Sasol, EOH, and BHP. So the list has been updated uh, quite recently. Right within this month, so there's four shares that's been listed extra that we can keep an eye on. Right, and they will most likely grow, even though they are a negative. All of these shares were a negative when they when they started off from the winning shares list, and all but now all of them started to make profit. So these new ones that that's been added, as a good chance to start generating profit. Um, charting tools and charts IQ will go through an in session two heat map. Just basically it gives you a heat map of all the shares. So for instance, SVN is the best performer for the day, where it gets more red will give you the weakest share right at the bottom for the day. And then your positive growers will give you the positive growth growers for the day. So green being the best, red being the worst, and then negative growth would show you um, the RD gold was the one that fell the most, where DSY was the one that fell the least, right? So red being the, the worst, green being the best. Top 40 is a bit scrambled. So obviously the red, redder it gets, the, the the more the share has fallen, the greener it gets, the more the share has gone up. All right. And then obviously your watch list. So if you create a watch list, uh, the watch list will basically show you how your shares have performed since you've added or added them onto the watch list. So Quilter will be my best performer on, on my watch list, when DRD would be my worst performer on the watch list. So stocks will go through in session in session two as well, and then Golden Goose uh, will also go through in the Golden Goose video. Um, then underneath accounts, you get your your invest option. Invest option will um, you don't really need to use because there's an easier way to invest on the shares instead of um, going there, click on clicking on invest, going to equities, then selecting the sector, then selecting the share. That's a long way around. Easiest way is to go to search. Type in your code, wait for the share, and click on it. 
right? And then you can buy directly from there instead of using the invest option, right? But if you want to invest into ETFs, that would be the only way. Go to invest, click on ETF. <coughs> It will load them all up. There's no sectors. You just need to go and search this year and click on buy. Then financials would be your uh, would be um, your basically like your account or your book your bookkeeper keeping track of all your financials. Like for instance, that the CV account, there's my simulation account, all the investments I've done over there. Uh, the current holdings that I've got there, the safety the safety ratchets. Let's say, for instance, my trading account, safety ratchets. It will say that I need to go and sell um, my Sabanya shares because my target value has been reached, but they didn't set anything up for the rest of my shares. So the target value has been reached on this one, so it's telling me to go and sell. But I'm not going to sell because Sabanya is still growing. Okay. It will show you transactions with your transaction, transaction dates when you've bought the share, your shares, the cash flow and then also your income and expenses. All right, so this is just to show you basically where your money went to, okay, as you bought, as you bought and sold your shares. And then it's manage accounts. This is where you can go and create extra accounts. So you can uh, you can only have one trader account. It will warn you at the bottom left if you've already got one. But if you go to investment account, you'll be able to create up, up to three. All right, so it will usually be your, your main investment account plus two, okay. Um, so it will usually warn you also that you won't be able to create any extra accounts. So this whole area here would be blanked out, all right, with a message warning you that you can't create any extra accounts. Calculators, the investment calculator, this will go through in session two. Uh, and then the financial independence calculator basically show you how long you will take to reach financial independence if you start trading on the on the stock market. So if my monthly income, let's say, is 10,000 per month, with a future inflation rate of 6% per year, so it's 6% increase every year that I get. Capital that I, that I, that I have saved um, until now, so let's say I have saved 50,000 Rand. So far up until now, your um, savings rate, so what percentage of my salary would I be able to, to save? Let's say 10%, so 1,000 1, Rand per month, and then your return. So how much are you expecting expecting per year annually? So let's say I want 40% per year annually, and I say calculate. It will calculate for you and say I will take five years and three months to reach financial independence. Then my money starts working for me, and I can basically stop working then. All right, because then I've got more or less the same income, which um, basically 10,000 rand per month on my salary, and obviously it will increase as it goes along. So. You can make more than ten thousand rand a month after that five years, right? Because remember, it 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 keeps on increasing and increasing and increasing as you trade on the stock market. And in education, you get your lecture models. Now, this is basically part of the T's and C's. This is a must do, right? So you'll see that you've got the four different modules. You've got your introductory, you've got your technical, you've got your fundamentals and economics. So each one of them, if you click on more on the right hand side. It will give you an entire module on that your motivation, for instance, with, with stuff that you need to read through, a bit of charting, and then two videos at the bottom that you need to go and watch. And then after you did that, you can go over to the exams and write the exams on that. So then you can go to, let's say, introductory. I did your motivation. I start the exam, and they will give me a monkey puzzle, puzzle to do. And I can click on them. Click the answer just next, click on the answer next, click on the answer, and <coughs> sorry about that. <coughs> Up until I get to the last one, and then finish. So the first one will have six. All right. And every, so not all of them will have six uh, questions, some of them will have, have 10, some of them might have 15. I think the most would go up until 15. All right. But these are a must do, and the and the percentage to pass them is fifty percent. Okay, underneath uh, your webinars, you'll get all the different webinars you can go go through. So the first section, the share track and webinars, these are based on the exams and the lecture modules. Okay, so I will um, recommend not not to go and watch them bef uh, beforehand. Rather go through the lecture modules and watch them as you go along. 
Okay. The live webinar archive is basically an archive of all our webinars that we've done so far. Like this one, for instance, this is a share track and basic one. Carl already did his on Monday. Share track and boss is in on the Carl for bike. So that one would be in Afrikaans. It's the one that he did on Monday. Okay. So this one is also recorded. So you will be able to watch it afterwards. Then your share track and tubes is a little bit more advanced. So like into your account period, balance of payments, what is the equity, what is dependence, how does candlestick works, uh, um, and then how to read your, read your financial uh, year results, and then your earnings per share, EPS. And then your webinar bookings. If you want to make a webinar booking, you'll be able to do it underneath webinar bookings. Then um, also your glossary, any words or terms that you don't understand on the software, just click on glossary and we'll give you all the uh, the words uh, that you can go and search up. For instance, if you don't know what abandon means, click on abandon. It will give you the the um, explanation for abandon. If you don't know, for instance, let's say what option means, you just click on option and it gives you explanation for option. All right. So every red word will also have an explanation. All right. The definition and a and an explanation. Okay. And then underneath your news and information, you get your market news. So market news will basically be, be all all the news for the current day. All right. So market news would be all, all your all the information for the current day. So the 17th of June, and this this basically is like your your newspaper. You don't need to go and buy the newspaper. This is your newspaper that you can go through. Okay. So this is news and information from um, Herald Live. Um, South African today, um, sometimes from YouTube, sometimes sometimes from MoneyWeb. So this will give you all the information that's currently happening on the JSC stocks. Okay. So as you go down, it will give you all the information for today. And this thing updates all, uh, also updates every 15 minutes as the information comes through. Okay. It just takes a long while to load because it's got a lot of information to load. I think it ke keeps. Um, yeah, it keeps a lot of information. So, so that's the amount of pages that that it's already pulled. So, three thousand six hundred thirty-eight pages of information that it's pulled. And Sense News uh, will give you the stock stock exchange news service, but this is only open from five until from, sorry, from nine until five. Okay. And then your market information will give you a little bit of more market information on what's currently happening on the J, oh, not currently happening on the JSC, the the current shares that list that's listed on the JSC, and also telling if the shares are suspended or active. If they are suspended, you are not able to trade with them. If they are active, you are trade, able to trade with them. And then the JSC index uh, references. So this is something like the J203. Or the J200, so all the J codes that you, that um, that's out there. So for instance, like the J177, that's the mining industry. Um, then you also get your mid cap, small cap, and your all share index. Um, your resources, your top top 10 resources, your your top 25 industrials, top 15 um, financial institutes. So all these codes you'll be able to go and pull up on the charting as well, but you can't trade with the J codes. Or right? just know that these are only indexes. You can't trade with the index. Then your list of stockbrokers. So this is the list of stockbrokers that you can go and res register for. If you want to open an online share trading account, then you need to go to list of stockbrokers, click on the link, and then it will take you to the website that you that you need to fill in the forms to be able to register for the online share trading account. Okay. Um, and also just note uh, um, the online share trading facilities. If it says yes, then then you've got online share trading facilities to use. If it says no, then you obviously you don't have online share, share trading facilities to use. Media um, is our Facebook page, Twitter page, and the blog. So if you want to join the Facebook page, you just click on Facebook. It will take you directly to the Facebook page, which you just need to click on Join Group. And then I will get a notification on my side, and then I I I, I need to approve your um, request. But there are two questions that you need to fill in. One is your contact number or the serial number on the box, and also you need to agree to the the rules of the of of, of the group. If you don't um, agree to the rules of on the group, then I I will decline. Okay. So if the, you you said no, you you're not going to follow the rules, then I decline. Okay. If you only entered your number 
um, and, and you didn't accept the rules, I will decline. If you, if you didn't enter anything, then also I will decline, all right? You need to fill in both. You need to, uh, you need to agree to the rules and also enter your number, okay? Um, and then the Twitter page, I mean, the Twitter page is open for everyone. Um, just click on Twitter and then you can follow us on Twitter as well. But there's more information on the Facebook page than what there is on the um, on the on the Twitter page, right? Um, and then the blog, basically, the blog is if you want to learn a little bit more about strategies, or if you want to learn a little bit more about ch um, charting or or, or um, candlesticks or stuff like that, then you can work work through the blog. And then also. We've got possible retracement buy and sell opportunities with all the webinar links. So over here, there's more webinars for you to go and register for. So possible retracement buy and sell opportunities and timing when should I buy, when should I sell. Okay. Um, 